Ashhadu an la ilaha illa Allah wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan Rasul Allah. Uh, my uh, present appointment as a head of an electrical department in a university in London. For the first half of my life uh, before that, I worked in industry, uh, the latter few years designing very large electrical machines. So most of my life has professionally been devoted to uh, electrical engineering primarily, also mechanical engineering, and I have spent uh, much of the rest of my time uh, studying and researching in parapsychology, psychical research. I am here in this conference because uh, uh, you, my colleague and I, decided that we would offer a paper on some unusual states of consciousness which are not uh, very much uh, the concern of normal science, but which are certainly uh, dealt with in the Quran and Hadith. Uh, I would just like to add uh, that we, our, our findings together hmm. uh, showed in the paper which has been presented to the conference that this coincides with the Quranic ayat, uh, which I may read in Arabic, uh, بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الله يتوفى الأنفس حين موتها والتي لم تمت في منامها فيمسك التي قضى عليها الموت ويرسل الأخرى إلى أجل مسمى إن في ذلك لآيات لقوم يتفكرون. We read a paper on altered states of consciousness of the human being called out of the body experiences, lucid dreaming and near death experiences is our paper dealt with altered states of consciousness of human beings. Uh, states of consciousness different from ordinary physical space. Allah يتوفى الأنفس حين موتها والتي لم تمت في منامها فيمسك التي قضى عليها الموت ويرسل الأخرى إلى أجل مسمى إن في ذلك لآيات لقوم يتفكرون We considered three particular states of consciousness, the first being the out-of-body experience in which many human beings for uh, indeed many thousands of years have had the experience of floating outside their physical body uh, in another body usually, but not always, and seeing their physical body lying on the bed after interesting experiences later returning to it. That normally takes place with no break in consciousness from getting in bed uh, to finally having the experience of returning to the body. The other kind of state of consciousness that we dealt with uh, was lucid dreaming. In lucid dreaming, one also has um, an experience of moving around uh, what looks like the physical world Sometimes it's in a world which can be altered by the dreamer. The lucid dreamer, the word lucid, means the dreamer is well aware that they are dreaming and that their physical body is in uh, another place, perhaps back home in bed. They remember the things they did earlier and they remember the things they're going to do the following day.
it has been found possible to communicate uh, with a lucid dreamer uh, through the action of their physical body. For example, uh, a lucid dreamer remembers that he discussed an experiment with the experimenters. He can flick his eyes to and fro uh, and produce electrical activity in the muscles which move his eyes and that will signal to the experimenters in their ordinary state of consciousness that the experiment is about to begin and then he can perhaps lift a weight and let a weight down to the ground again in his dream and it has been found that certain electrical activity occurs in the muscles of his arms and legs. That is the sort of experiment that can be done to study that particular state of consciousness called lucid dreaming. The final of the three states of consciousness we uh, considered in our paper was the near-death experience. During the last 20 years or so, it has been possible for doctors to resuscitate people, patients, subjects who are clinically dead. That is, they have no heartbeat, no breathing, no electrical brain activity which can be recorded, uh, any doctor would pronounce them dead. Sometimes subjects having experience of that kind have heard themselves pronounced by a doctor or, or by other friends around or others to be dead. They have then had the experience of hearing a rushing roaring noise rather like a, a wind and then moving along a dark tunnel and coming out into the light until relatively recently as i explained i didn't know very much about the scientific work which is to be found in these uh, religious teachings uh, finding out about that uh, made me think very deeply but I was very surprised uh, to learn quite recently of the scientific statements which are to be found in Quran and Hadith. I was very surprised uh, to find uh, that there are these statements about psychical research matters uh, which Dr. Yahya uh, has um, quoted. الله يتوفى الأنفس حين موتها والتي لم تمت في منامها فيمسك التي قضى عليها الموت ويرسل الأخرى إلى أجل مسمى إن في ذلك لآيات لقوم يتفكرون. I was also very surprised to hear um, other Western scientists uh, quote uh, statements in the Quran about embryology and about geology and various other uh, medical matters. The stages of embryonic and fetal development mentioned in the Quran should be used when teaching Muslim students because they are in accordance with our modern understanding of the development before birth. It will also enable Muslim doctors and nurses to explain human development to their patients using Quranic references. Some of those facts uh, not having been discovered until the years of the present century. As the Quran and Hadith uh, are some 1400 years old, that surprised me uh, very much and made me wonder uh, what the source could be. Mohammed could not have known these facts about human development in the 7th century because most of them were not discovered until the 20th century. Muslims and others are justified in concluding that these facts could only have been revealed to Mohammed by the one known who knows all about us, not only about how we developed, but how we live and function. I uh, called myself um, Abdullah Ellison. <laughs>